What up? This is Josh Room from East West Healing and Performance. Today I want to talk about energy metabolism and fatigue. A lot of the things in this video I've talked about many times. But we just wrote a blog on this. We haven't posted it yet. It'll go up soon, probably this week. Maybe it'll go with this video. Who knows? So I'm going to talk, of course, like I always do, and read a little bit from the document so we can talk about why everyone is so tired these days. I mean, if you notice, if you walk by and you see someone or you talk to a friend, hey, how are you doing? Everyone says, oh, I'm exhausted. I can't wait till Friday. Why? Of course, we have a lot of stresses in our life. Sometimes many of us wish we had different lives. But at the same time, I think people are walking around just completely exhausted and tired all the time. You should have optimal energy all the time. Now, of course, there's times we're human, you know, you're going to be tired. But the bottom line is, how can we regulate energy metabolism at the cell level with food to regulate energy, but also prevent fatigue? Now, there's a crucial part of the, of the cell that produces energy or regulates metabolism. It's called the mitochondria. At the same time, within this part of the cell, there's a crucial enzyme in the mitochondria. It's called cytochrome oxidase. This enzyme plays a major role in interacting with oxygen in the cell, which begins the process of cellular respiration. In quoting Ray P. PhD, learning how to preserve and promote the activity of this enzyme is important is an important issue for everything having to do with biological energy. Now, I talked about basic cell metabolism. We can take a quick look at it once again, if you refer to the last video I did on um, taking body temperature and pulse. I talk about this uh, a little bit more in depth as well. If you want to learn more on this stuff and get more in depth in the physiology, you can sign up for our Metabolic Blueprint program, and the link is actually down below. So our cells are trying to produce energy, which is carbon dioxide, ATP, and water. That's energy. These are the end products of efficient glucose oxidation, or how our cells are actually using glucose, which is termed oxidative metabolism. Okay, our cells are using oxygen, so it's the more technical term. When there's optimal respiration, we're producing carbon dioxide from using glucose oxidation. What happens is hemoglobin continues to release oxygen into the cells. So when CO2 is present from eating the right foods, the right ratios, the right frequencies, etc., every day, at every meal, at the end of the day, there's a continuous release of carbon dioxide, or I should say a continued production of carbon dioxide and a continuous release of oxygen from hemoglobin, which continu continues cellular respiration. This not only continues energy production, but also sustains respiration to all our cells, to all our organs, to all our tissues. And a lot of this, like I said, is actually from the metabolic blueprint. Now, of course, there's many things. We, this is YouTube. We can't go into everything. There's many things that can actually affect cellular respiration or affect how our cells breathe properly. According to Ray P. PhD, these are things like unsaturated fats, dioxins, halogens, heavy metals like mercury, radiation, estrogen, adrenaline, cortisol, serotonin, and free fatty acids. Now, of course... These affect how our cells breathe. What we're really looking at is the balance between carbon dioxide and lactic acid. When you're, you're, Your cells have two choices. Do I produce energy, carbon dioxide, or am I going to produce inflammation from the cell level up and I'm going to produce lactic acid? Lactic acid is an efficient way of producing energy. Typically, our cells are not using oxygen efficiently. They're not using, all, they're, they're not using glucose efficiently, so there's altered glucose oxidation and typically increased lipid oxidation. And what we get is increased lactic acid production. And the more lactic acid we actually produce, this is a huge metabolic burden to our body, to our cells, to our liver, because the liver tries to take the lactic acid using stored glycogen, that's if we're even storing it, to try to produce it to glucose. So we don't produce enough energy, we actually waste our reserves. So it's not a huge, it's not a beneficial way of producing energy. Now, we talked about this in one of our last blogs. I'll post the blog below so you can click on that and read about the anti an uh, antagonistic roles of lactic acid and carbon dioxide. Now, to quote Ray P. PhD in one of his newsletters, mitochondrial animals which are fed a diet lacking in these essential fatty acids are more resistant to oxidation than the mitochondria from animals fed a standard American diet containing unsaturated oils, but they also have very... Um, have very different in vitro swelling behavior. R.M. Johnson suggested that the swelling tendency in the liver mitochondria is associated with altered respiratory and or phosphorylating mechanisms rather than membrane alteration. Thus we can conclude that a diet lacking these essential fatty acids 
are facilitatory towards oxidative metabolism, facilitatory towards everything I just talked about. And essential fatty acids, we can conclude, actually inhibit this cytochrome oxidase enzyme in the mitochondria, which are important because they interact with oxygen. And according to Kunkel and Williams, they found that the high respiratory rate in animals fed a diet lacking polyunsaturated fatty acids was caused primarily by a great increase of the activity of the cytochrome oxidase enzyme. And adding these essential fatty acids strongly inhibit these enzymes activity. So what we're saying here is basically a diet lacking essential fatty acids upregulates mitochondrial respiration and carbon dioxide production, as well as a diet lacking in essential fatty acids actually increases respiratory rate, and this increased respiratory rate was because the facilitatory action or the lack of inhibition of the cytochrome, cytochrome oxidase enzyme. Now another important factor according to Ray P PhD that we can correlate with unsaturated fats in cellular respiration is cardi cardiolipin. That's C-A-R-D-I-O-L-I-P-I-N. So cardiolipin is a phospholipid that's actually found in the mitochondria that supports the function of the cytochrome oxidase enzyme. The cytochrome oxidase enzyme is actually influenced by copper and other minerals, especially copper and red light. It actually is very facilitatory to the cytochrome oxidase enzyme. So from that we conclude that foods with copper, like shellfish, and red light are actually facilitatory. And unsaturated fats and blue light are actually inhibitory to cellular respiration and the cytochrome oxidase enzyme. Now according to Ray P. PhD, Cytochrome oxidase is often damaged by stress and blue light, inactivated or restored by red light, thyroid, and progesterone. Cytochrome oxidase is actually the most active part of the cell when it's associated with cardiolipin, which is mostly saturated fat or palmitic acid. Now, unsaturated fats, we talk about this a lot in the metabolic blueprint, have a high affinity for water. So under cell excitation, stress, and edema, Unsaturated fats actually permeate into the cell, and they substitute this palmitic acid, which is a saturated fat, which lowers cardiolipin activity. When cardiolipin activity actually becomes more unsaturated versus saturated, it begins to become less stable, and it's not supportive to the processes in the mitochondria, as well as the cytochrome oxidase enzyme. Once the PUFAs replace the palmitic acid in the mitochondria, carbon dioxide production actually declines, and according to Ray P. PhD, mitochondrial function in general is poisoned by unsaturated fats. So what we're saying here is this. Anytime you're stressed or not meeting your blood sugar regulation needs, your energy needs, whatever it may be at the cell level, your cells typically take on water, they take on calcium, and they take an estrogen, which actually alkalizes the cell. So in a stressed state, we're actually more alkalinic at the cell level. We're producing lactic acid, so we're more acidic externally or extracellular. When this happens, our cells hyperhydrate, they get swollen. There's an increased glycolytic conversion of, of glycogen to lactic acid instead of glucose. As well as we get a, a permeability issue of the unsaturated fats making their way in, which further affects cellular respiration and the alkalinity of the cell. Now, as I mentioned, cytochrome oxidase is heavily influenced by red light. As a component of the cytochrome oxidase enzyme, as I mentioned, contains copper, which is essential for the absorption of this red light. This is why you can refer to our Light Therapy for Healing YouTube that we did. I'll post it below, as well as we talk about this in the Metabolic Blueprint, how you can actually use incandescent light or red light to actually help heal or as an added adjunct to help with cellular respiration. And the foods that we eat, because they can actually support the cytochrome oxidase enzyme, which is important because it interacts with oxygen. And if you go back to the beginning of this YouTube, we talked about how that is important with hemoglobin to actually keep facilitating cellular respiration. Now, at the same time, there's things that can actually inhibit it. Of course, iron. Iron is antagonistic to copper. So if we're using iron pots and pans, if we're, let's say, eating tons of liver every week, um taking iron supplementations, and I did two YouTubes on this, which I'll post below as well, the dangers of iron part one and part two, we can actually downregulate because they're antagonistic levels of copper in the body. So iron is antagonistic to copper. So if we increase our copper levels, we can actually kind of regulate the ratio between the toxic, the toxicity of iron 
and regulate copper, which will help regulate the cytochrome oxidase enzyme. Now, iron is pretty interesting because it has no mechanism of actually getting out of the body. There's no mechanism. As we're young, we're growing, we need it, but as we age, we don't need it as much, and it actually becomes a toxic heavy metal that's very inhibitory to carbon um, dioxide production. And it actually pushes our cells to produce more carbon monoxide. As well, at the same time, I'll post two YouTubes we did on this, on general adaptations and stress and energy and metabolism. If we're not eating the right foods, carbs, proteins, and fats, which I talk about many times and I talked about a little in this video. If we're not meeting our energy demands at the cell level every day with the right food frequencies, ratios, grams, calories, etc. at each meal at the end of the day, based on what we're doing, exercise, not exercising, studying, etc., of course your ratios per day will change. This can actually stimulate adrenaline and cortisol. Now, I talked about this a lot, and I talk about it in my videos, so you can watch those. But another interesting fact, quoting Ray Peak, is that when you become hyperadrenaline and hypocortisol, there's a protein that's called metallothionine, which is induced by cortisol as well as heavy metals. So if we're not regulate, regulating our blood sugar, we're going to produce excess cortisol. And this actually is in, this, this uh, excess cortisol induces this protein called metallothionine. Now, the interesting thing about metallothionine, it actually binds copper. So if we have heavy metal poisoning or we're not regulating blood sugar and we stimulate this, po um, this protein, we actually downregulate copper metabolism or stores in the body, which will upregulate iron as well as affect optimal cellular respiration. So there's a lot of factors that we have to think about. We have to think about red light, we have to think about copper, we have to think about eliminating unsaturated fats, eliminating blue light, etc., etc. What we're doing with this is we're actually focusing on upregulating thyroid or energy metabolism. Because our body uses oxygen, it uses T3, and it uses sugar, glucose, to produce energy. So if we eat the right foods and we eliminate unsaturated fats and we live a healthy life, we can actually upregulate thyroid energy production. And according to Ray P. PhD, among other things, thyroid produces increased activity of the cytochrome oxidase enzyme. So of course, right there, we're actually getting another benefit to this energy, um, we could say energy enzyme of the cell. Now, I mentioned red light, so I'll touch a little bit up, up, upon this, or I should say, how do we prevent fatigue? How do we upregulate cellular energy production? Well, the first is the use of light therapy for healing, and I did a YouTube on that, and you can check it out. As I mentioned, according to Ray Pete, right, red light and coconut oil instead of unsaturated oils will cause a great increase in energy consumption. You can use the use of coconut oil to upregulate cellular energy production and the cytochrome oxidase enzyme. Coconut oil contains lauric acid, which inhibits glycolysis, thus preventing hypoglycemia and the stress reaction. You can increase your intake of shellfish and things like that that contain copper, which is important for the cytochrome oxidase enzyme. You can increase your intake of ripened tropical fruits as they have a higher saturated to unsaturated fat ratio, so they have a higher sucrose level. Sucrose is not only needed for oxidative metabolism, but is the thyroid cells and thymic cells are actually dependent on glucose for optimal cellular energy production. You can increase your foods that contain vitamin E, such as dairy, crab, and squashes. Vitamin E is actually anti-estrogenic and pro-progesterone. It's a major antioxidant and improves oxygenation of your cells and tissues, protects against lipid peroxidation, protects against iron and calcification, and spares vitamin A. And vitamin A is essential to produce progesterone, as well as it's essential for oxidative metabolism. As well as you can, click on the link below to go to the blog and read the rest of the blog to learn more how you can increase your overall energy and energy metabolism. Peace.